Yay. <gasps> and I'm going to keep an eye out on like if there's comments and stuff coming in. Nope. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Go sit down. Go lay down. Go be like Barley. Be a good boy. Has your dog been doing the same thing that my dog does where he just gets really confused at who you're talking to? <laughs> <Probably. He's> like, <laughs> he freaks out and he's just like, what is going? Who is it? If it's not me, then who could it possibly be? And it's like, oh my God. <laughs> so how do I share? Can I share? So we're if we're live on Facebook, where are we live at? Yeah, so we are live. I'll send you the link. Is it via Facebook. ASOP Facebook page? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> there I am. <laughs> okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you you can see questions and stuff because i can't see anything right now yeah i've got it we're good yeah because otherwise like I, the other thing that i have to do every time is like turn our um uh the volume off or else i get this horrible reverb and i like hear myself like over and over again in an endless loop and it's it, it haunts me in my nightmares uh <laughs> so i like keep the comments off to the side so we got people rolling in now hey everybody if you have questions, throw them in the chat. We're here. What's up? It's a party. Yes. All righty. We are going to start off. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. Hi, everyone. Welcome to your evening photography chat with me, Sarah Keith, as your moderator the owner and director of the Atlanta School of Photography who has no social cues anymore because of quarantine. Hello, yes. And I'm here with the uh, amazing tour de force that is Julie Hunter. Uh, yes, Julie, if you wanna introduce yourself and let everybody know what like what it is, if, if all, the, all of the stuff that you do. So um, I'm a photographer, obviously, been in the business for about 20 years, uh, added video about seven or eight years ago, about 10 years ago, really. Um, and then here recently, I've actually started managing a very cool spot inside of King Plow, which is called Savage Studios uh, ATL. So, um, you know, still working with cameras as much as I can, but um, really loving the space and being able to kind of like root down a little bit. And um, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Yay. So I have questions i have a multitude of them um first one being um i'm sure it's like any photographer always like to ask another photographer is how did you first start getting into photography like where did it begin so um it's funny because every time i read like a bio on someone's page i'm like i didn't start when i was five you know like you know like people are like i started when i was five i had this little toy camera and my parents always knew it no it wasn't like that. <laughs> But like, okay, when I was a teenager, um, way back when, um, we had, uh, you know, the, uh, not disposable cameras necessarily, but the cameras that had disposable bulbs at the top. So you would, it's film. And then, so that was kind of my first, and anybody who knows me is going to laugh about this, but like some of the first pictures I would take is pictures of me in the bathroom mirror. Yeah. <laughs> Selfies. Okay. Whatever. I'm a professional too, but whatever. So like. <laughs> But that was kind of my first kind of start with it when I was with a, with a teen, as a teenager. And I, I liked it, but it wasn't like, I didn't really feel like, oh, I'm going to be a photographer. I think that like all, uh, let's say Americans or whatever, but like, like all whatever good citizens, I thought I would get a real job and like photography wasn't a real job at the time. And so I did other things and uh i did work at walmart portrait studio for a while that was oh man if there's a <laughs> book that i want to have is stories from like the walmart and the sears portrait studios in the 90s if you want to collaborate on that with me please let me know yes 
I also want to get uh, a couple. I'd like Kahaya, our, our front desk. She used to do um, the uh, aquarium, the oh. portrait photographer as you walked into the aquarium. Yep. I want a storybook of like all of these, but we'll discuss that Shark Tank idea at another time. Yes. <laughs> so <clears throat> that was that was well. Be it was kind of like people knew I had a camp. Like when I turned twenty five. Um, I also, the, the night that I turned 25 and had a surprise birthday party, my, my, my mom bought me a film uh, Rebel. So that was kind of my first real, like, it was an SLR. You could take the lenses off. I thought, oh my God, I'm, I've hit the big time now. I have an SLR. And that night I also found out I was pregnant with my first child. Oh so man. Pretty much all of her photos are film. <laughs> um, and yes. then, like the, by the third child, I had a digital camera and now you know, then I switched to digital and whatever. Now I have like tons of digital images of everybody else, but, um, but yeah, so that was kind of my, like my baby footsteps into photography. I, I liked it as a hobby. Again, didn't think it would be a career type thing. Fast forward to uh, me working at Walmart portrait studio. And I was like, well, I learned a lot about customer service. I got to say, uh, not, not a whole lot about photography at all. Um, I learned how to sell upsell, <laughs> which is photography. Yes. Um, but, <laughs> But uh, after that, um, basically I started working as an office manager in a building full of men. And one of the guys got engaged to a lady who was a full-time wedding photographer out in San Luis Obispo in California. And um, I started communicating with her over, over email because, sorry about the dogs, they're gonna- no. <laughs> I was letting everybody else, I know you know, but I was letting everybody else know. <laughs> But she was a full-time wedding photographer. So I started email, emailing her, you know, saying, hey, you're engaged to my coworker. I know you're going to move to Georgia. You don't know anybody. So let me introduce myself. And we kind of became friends over email. Well, through that, she was like, when I come to town, hey, I need somebody to be my assistant. And I was like, oh, well, actually, I have kind of an interest in photography. All I had was still that rebel film camera. Though. And um, she said, well, if you're going to work weddings with me, you're going to have to have a digital camera. And I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Hey, pal, buddy. <laughs> um, so I spent $1,000, which these days is like a drop in the hat, right? Yeah. But at the time, I was like, oh my God, I'm spending $1,000. And I got my first digital camera from eBay back in the day when eBay was the thing. Came with like a bag, came with the two kit lenses that nobody ever uses these days. Um, but it was a Nikon D70. Uh, she was shooting Nikon, even though I had a rebel Canon film camera, she was shooting Nikon digital. And so she was like, well, if you're going to work with me, you have to have Nikon too. Yeah. So anyway, bought the camera set, started assisting her. And then that led to me joining, uh, later down the road, like a few years later down the road, I found the APG, uh, which is the Atlanta photographers guild in, um, Atlanta and started going to the meetings and um, I, I just I fell in love. Like, honestly, I walked in, I was super shy. I had never shot a model before. That's what they do as they shoot models all the time, just to kind of get you used to working with people and everything. And the girl who I was shooting that night I actually wasn't even a model. She was a girl, it was at a, we were at a pub and she was upstairs at the bar and the guy who runs the thing, he was like, hey, you're kind of cute. You're, you're cute, you know, do you want some pictures? Our model didn't show up. Can you come downstairs and like be a model? And she said, sure. And she, she was cute. And so like, we all were standing in the line waiting to go shoot her. And like, I'm like in the line going, I don't even know what to say. Like, I don't even know what to do. And like, I walked up to her and I said, Hey, that thing that that guy told you to do that the last guy, just do it the opposite direction. Yeah. <laughs> well, not exactly the way you did for him, but like, just look the other way. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, Okay, I got you. And like, I took her picture and that became my first business card. And like, from there, I just like took off and it, it was so natural and so fun. Um, once I got over my like little anxiety of, of talking to people and, and sure. directing, uh, models, I think, um, like I, I couldn't stop. Like, it was just so fun. It was a great outlet. And I, I wasn't doing it for money at the time, of course. And, um, so like, it just was so cool. And then when I started doing it for money, of course, we all uh, go through the, you know, I was doing it for this much money and, you know, I didn't expect to be paid what I'm really worth or whatever. And um, anyway, so I got to the point where I, I started being able to say, you know, I really can't do it unless you pay me X. 
And that's a really good feeling after a while. At first, it is nerve wracking to yes. track your worth. Um, and then after you've done it a couple of times and you actually get paid exactly what you asked for. I know. You're like, what have I been doing this whole time? <laughs> like, this is way better. This yeah. is way more awesome. We, I, I had a workshop earlier today, which was like specifically on um, like the business of photography and money and um, everyone like their big, as soon as I started talking about what do you charge? Everyone just goes, what yeah what 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 do you charge and, I'm, and it's really fun when I get to go there's no right answer and I don't here's some examples but at the end of the day it's kind of just like mm, here's a ballpark of of what to charge and yeah and every single one of our students who's like getting into the business of it almost always comes back and asks like when do I start charging and how do I not feel guilty for like charging. And it's like, you got to get over that. You got to get over that mentality. And it really helps when that first check comes in the mail. Yeah. I think it, it has a lot to do. Like a lot of it has to do with confidence, of course, like being able to charge what you're worth or whatever. But I think it also has to do with the fact that I think we all hopefully get into photography initially because we really like it. Like we yeah. really like photography and it feels kind of wrong to charge for something that we like to do. Yeah. And then it's like, after a while you're like okay I, I got bills like everybody else like i gotta i gotta start making some money on this even if you have a full-time job like you need to be able to um sorry there you're good uh -oh. but no that's it it's like just to be able to say okay yeah i feel guilty for charging someone something it's it's like going to a theme park and you're having a ton of fun and then you're like charging your friends to come with you and it's right. just like how is this fair how is this at all fair? But yeah, then it's like, okay, I'm dedicating a pretty severe amount of my time to this and it's taking away from other things. And this is something that I really want to do. And I think the other thing that helps immensely is like people will start to offer to pay you. Like if you have people coming up and saying, I no, let me give you money. I know for me, that was like one of the first things where it's like, no, please let me pay you. And I was like, okay, yeah. And then taking that amount of money and either paying bills, but also going to like other types of equipment, a new lens, like all that good stuff. It was like, okay, wait, yeah, this is probably legit. <laughs> I'm trying to, sorry, when that call came in, it like completely made me. Oh, I'm right. tiny. Yeah. And so I'm trying to figure out how to make you bigger. I'm just like a super tiny person now. Not that it matters, but I mean, I know what you look like anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's a mystery. As it, as it goes on, I'm going to just put disguises on and see if you notice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you're a little bit bigger. You're not, you're not this small. You're like this small. So we're okay. Big. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so in that where it's like you're kind of building into finally charging and your business and doing photography and all of that, where did the path go to like the different types of photography that you do? Cause I know you ended up having a pretty wide stretch of different genres. And is there one that you like the most yeah. or yeah. I think like pretty much everybody else, you know, you kind of do everything uh, at first because, you know, as soon as you start putting pictures up, people are like, oh, you do really great photography. Can you shoot my dog? Can you shoot this butterfly? Can you shoot this? Can you shoot that? Can you sh and at first you're just like, yes, yes, yes. I'll yeah. do it. Um, and so I, I don't remember, I, I don't think it was a person. It was no great moment in my life or anything. I think that um, basically... I was shooting a lot of models because they were my practice. You know, that's who I practice on. Um, and so uh, I realized that I was shooting boudoir without calling it boudoir at the time because this was oh, before cool. everybody kind of jumped on the boudoir train. Mm -hmm. And so um, I realized it was a title for it. And I asked um, one of my model friends, hey, um, I want, I think I want to do this as a, I think I want to do this as a genre. I said, but do you mind if I practice on you? And she, and she said, of course. And I said, do you mind if I bring two other models to your house? Cause she had a beautiful house uh, in Atlanta. And so she was like, yeah, no, def definitely. And she was actually a flight attendant. I call myself the unofficial official flight attendant photographer because I've shot a handful, uh, at least five, like <laughs> all related in that circle of people, um, all of their boudoirs. 
And so if you're a flight attendant, hit me up. <laughs> yeah, it's like just getting on a Delta flight and they're coming down the aisle with peanuts and you're just like, hey, what's up? How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> So um, anyway, so I did the practice thing at, at her house that went really well. And so I was like, all right, I need to do this for a like a real person, like not just a model, not someone who's comfortable on camera. Like I want to be able to see if I can do this for like a client. And so I put up, I did one, a, a boudoir a marathon was the first thing I did. Um, and so of course, if you don't know what a boudoir marathon is, basically you book a location and then you just kind of like time slot it out and then you shoot people throughout the day. Usually you provide hair and makeup. I did that day as well. Um, and so uh, I booked out a boutique hotel in Atlanta uh, that's no longer, I think it, it's apartments now. But um, so I did that. And the very first girl like immediately uh, jumped on my deal was like, yes, I want to sign up for this. I think it was like $125. Woo! Oh that my God. Good. That was it. There was no upsell. That was, yeah, wow. Woo! Anyway, so, but that was a long time ago, guys. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I did uh, that deal and she jumped on it immediately. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited. It was my first person that was, so she was, she's married to a guy that I went to school with that I had never had a conversation with. So I literally have no connection to her, really, except for the fact that I knew of her husband. And the only way I knew of her husband is because he was a triplet and everybody knows triplets in high school, right? Oh yeah. Not. So anyway, um, so I, I, I shot the, oh, anyway, so I set her up for the appointment. It was three weeks away and I was hyping her up and getting excited, booking some other people in the meantime. Well, like a week from the actual day, she messages me and she's like, I think I can't go through with it. Like, I'm so nervous. I, you know, you can just keep the money. I just... Oh, she's just so nervous. Right. Um, and I was like, okay, here's the thing. This is brand new to me too. I said, but I promise you that you're going to walk away having a good time. And I said, I promise that you will love the photos so much that if, um, you're not satisfied by the end of the session, by the end of the marathon and the marathon is 45 minutes to an hour. At okay. The, per shoot. You do like 30 minute, 45 minute sessions. You don't do the full whammy. But because it was my very first time, I think I did like probably, I probably got to an hour with her just because I was like wanting to go that extra just to kind of win her over. But anyway, um, I told her that even if, you know, no matter what, I'd give her her money back if she wasn't satisfied and still give her the pictures just because I wanted to have a satisfied customer. That's super cool. Yeah. And so we get to the day she comes in, she gets her hair and makeup done. She brings in all this really cool lingerie. She's got some really wild stuff. I'm so excited. Yes. And um, I'm shooting her and um, she, uh, I'm going to touch it back. Anyway, so she, uh, we, we do the shoot together and before she even gets home. And of course, like a couple of times I turn the camera around, I'm like, look, girl, this is you, you know? And uh, before she even gets home, she pulls the car over and she writes this long uh, review before she even gets the picture from me before anything, which after the session, all of that, she writes this long review about how I made her so, feel so comfortable and she loved the session and it was just so amazing. And at that point in my life, I was like, I need to do this. This yeah. is what I need to do. Like I was made to do this for women. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. You know, I've shot all types of women at this point. Like it doesn't matter where you come from, what you look like, how tall, short, in between you are. I have shot that uh, person. Um, and actually now I've branched off and started doing men as well. And, That's awesome. And like, just to be fair, I've done all genders um, mm -hmm. included and, and everybody who identifies in any sort of way. I think I've done pretty much everything. Yeah. Um, and it's really exciting and, I, it, and nothing feels better to me than the person who I'm shooting just to be like in shock that that's them on the back of the camera. And I know that's a really like a almost cliche for a photographer to say these days because we all say that, but it still feels really, really good. I don't yeah. care who it is. It still feels really good. Well, and especially for boudoir photography, because I think that like, especially a lot of folks that initially kind of like like you were with her to say no this is going to be great and it's going to be super fun and I promise you're going to have a great time like kind of thing and they don't believe it until they experience it and then they really don't believe it until they see it yeah. so like I could take a portrait of someone 
wherever and they've kind of got an idea in their mind of what they think it's going to look like and how they've seen their friends headshots or something like that but with boudoir it's this whole other kind of thing where it's like I've seen it but I don't see me as that person and then when they do it's this bridge yeah I don't I don't wear lingerie ever I don't I mean I've heard all kinds of like I'm like I don't either like that's the thing that was the beautiful part about it is like I don't feel like I'm a 10. I don't feel like I, I don't fit lingerie. I don't, I'm not a lingerie model. I don't fit the shape size, uh, that whatever, you know, the perfect, whatever. Yeah. And so like, I felt like I could identify with most everybody that came mm -hmm. in the door because I felt the same way, you know, even my very last client that I just had, and I haven't really taken on a whole client, a lot of clients since, um, taking on the studio. But my very last client, it's funny because I met her in a restaurant. We were having the reveal through my laptop. And she says to me, like, I'm pulling up the pictures to show her. And it's facing me. Like, she can't see it. And she goes, oh, I just want to I just want to say before you turn the laptop around, so you don't feel bad. I have never liked pictures of me. So, like, if I don't like these, please don't be offended. Like, it's not you. It's totally like me. And, of course, like, Every photographer, I'm sure. It's like, like inside, you're going, oh, please like me. You know, like, I'm I know. It's like, even so, it's like, I, I want to be that person that, that does that. That would be the coolest thing. Why are you going to put that in my head now? Why you got to do that? I was like, I mean, part of it's ego a little bit. And part of, oh, yeah. like, part of it is I want my client to be like, I want her to have her first experience of or he or she or whoever. Like, I want them to have their first, like, oh my God, you know, like, yeah. that kind of thing. and so I literally, I was like sweating bullets, turning the laptop around for her to see the pictures. And the first thing she said was, oh, I typically don't like my profile, but I really like that one. That was the first picture. And I was like, all right, good. we're done. We're, you know, we did it. We did it. <laughs> I can retire. There's a very important squirrel outside. So he's calling me into the living room. He's like, you belong in here. This is what, what are you doing? Your mom. We come into yeah. the living room. So uh, anyway, um, what I was going to say too was, is we got all the way done looking at her pictures. And she said, also, let me just follow up with, I love the pictures. Like you, I, I can't believe this is me kind of thing. But she said, even if I had hated the pictures, I already knew I was going to refer you to all my friends because you have made That's so cool like so good and I was like okay well I like that I love that you love the pictures but I like that that also is how I made you feel because that's what I that's what I that's what I want you know I yeah. want someone to walk away and have a complete experience not just like oh I got a pretty picture or oh she's talented mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I don't care I mean I know I can take a picture I, I mean I'm not trying to be like you know big headed or anything I know I can take a picture like yeah you, you know, big deal. I want my client to feel like they are, they feel amazing. Like, yeah. I yeah, because I think for like a lot of photographers, especially now, it's like a nightmare scenario where it's like you have this idea in your head of that. Yeah, you can go and take good pictures. But if someone goes back and says, oh, God, but they were a nightmare to work with. It's like that's the last thing I ever want anyone to say about me is like, oh, my gosh, they were such a hassle. And that it was this and that. And the other thing is just, like, oh, don't do that. No, I don't want to be that person. The first photographer, I think I've heard some of those stories, like when they come mm -hmm. to me, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Before, but the last person was, and I was like, oh God. So now you have this expectation also, like you're, you, you're not even starting at ground level. Yes. Yeah. You have to like kind of pass that, you know, what happened before and make up for and be like, no, boudoir is not like that. Oh, please give us another chance, you know? And mm -hmm. there's a lot of people out there saying they can do boudoir and they really shouldn't be doing boudoir. You know, it's because it's, 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 you're taking whoever you're shooting, you're taking their fragile like self-esteem mm -hmm. and you're, I mean, you have to be really careful with that. You know, you can't just take a pretty photo and think that you're doing, you know, you have, it's a whole experience, you know, yeah. anyway. So we but yeah. So it's like going along that, like, how do you make the, the client comfortable, especially first time ones where it's like, they're not ready to kind of like have a better experience and that like, how do you, how do you create that better experience for them? Yep, exactly. Are you asking me how I do? Yeah, I'm asking how you do. <laughs> like, yeah, just do it. Oh. Easy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so 
Well, first of all, I think that I probably, uh, I try to stay very communicative with them leading up to the session. I try to give them a very clear picture of what to expect. Um, and then I really believe, this is one of the things I talk about in my workshops is having a team of people that work with you that know you really well and can speak kind of on your behalf or for you, kind of be your PR team. So like, for instance, way back in the day when I, when I told you I did um, models and that's all I did, I actually randomly, um, I don't even know how we first got it connected, but I found this makeup artist who was also kind of new to the game and she was also building her portfolio. So she, we literally met almost every Monday and shot for free all of these models because we both needed the practice. And so she would, we, you know, we, at first it was like, yeah, smoky eye, red lip, smoky eye, red lip, cause you know, whatever. And then like after a while I was like, Hey, let's do something fun. Let's do something crazy or whatever. But anyway, she was ridiculously talented. I mean, she's like, I, we're still connected and I still like give her shout outs all the time and, and stuff. And um, now she does like makeup for the news and all this kind of stuff. She, she's amazing. I mean, she probably does movie sets too. I don't know. I'm, I'm seriously underwhelmed, like over overwhelmed by her talent. So one of the great things about her was that when somebody, I mean, all these people were unknown to me, right? I'd go to model mayhem and be like, hey, you know, would you mind me practicing on you? I'm super new. Please be patient with me. It may take me a couple of hours. It never did. I'm, I'm, I'm super fast. I'm probably faster than I should be. But uh, I'd say, you know, give me a couple of hours. I promise I can, I'll give you at least five good photos, at least five. I'd come out with like 35 to 40 different pictures because once I found pockets of light and stuff, you know, in the yeah. studio that I was in, I mean, I would just, I'd shoot and shoot and shoot. And shoot. I was just like crazy about it. Anyway, so the really good thing about the makeup artist is that she, you know, we got, over time, we got to know each other really well and she knew how I worked and she knew my personality. And so um, most people who even know me in person, <laughs> not just Facebook, they find me to be a bit intimidating because I uh, am very business <laughs> like i get a very uh <laughs> driven and focused and we got stuff to do like kind of yeah i forget that people are you know like you know i need to relax a little yeah i, I julie needs to relax so <laughs> um <laughs> but you know, she would say hey you know julie once she gets in there and starts taking your picture it's going to be amazing mm -hmm. but don't don't get scared <laughs> she's very focused <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, but she was it, it was really good because she really let them like be at ease going into the session that's great they were like expecting me to be so the way I was and um and kind of over time since I've gotten a lot of confidence in how I speak to people and, and being able to shoot them and knowing I'm going to pull out several good photos like now it's not like oh am I going to be able to take I know I'm going to be able to take a picture I've been doing this for 20 years I mean yeah. if I not taking good pictures I should just hang up my camera no I've always 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 come out with something usable you know mm -hmm. and so uh anyway um well, back in the day of course I didn't know if that was gonna happen oh yeah it's just like so like okay let me let me just focus <laughs> and so anyway having someone on your team like that though is super important because not only do you have to be the person providing a good experience I feel like everybody who's there on your crew is adding to the ambiance and the experience and all of that and if you got somebody that's like there because they're being paid and that's it yeah yeah so, let me tell you over the years I've had you know paid crew members and then I've had people there that obviously everybody was paid but you know what I'm saying like they were there for a paycheck and then there were some that were there because they like me like if I say, hey, I need somebody to come work with me, I have oodles of people that stick their hand in the air because like, oh, Julie, I want to go work with her. Yeah. And it's because I am good to my people. And I mean, if I'm not, please call me out right now. I, yeah. You know, you know, I, I'm always good to my people that are good to me. And, and there's a reason for that is because if I'm good to them, they're going to speak kindly of me to other people and to my clients. And 
it's just a nice circle of life kind of thing. hundred percent. Yeah. I think it's one of those things where it's like, especially when you first start doing photography as a profession in the first couple of years, you realize how small the photography world really is at the end of the day. It is tiny y'all like it is <laughs> own weird universe where I have even it's like you think just in Atlanta Atlanta is just like an atom of the microcosm like it's yeah. one tiny piece of like another smaller thing so I've even had things where I've been in a completely different part of the country and they'll look at me and go did you intern for Amy Stein I'm like how do you know that what is, how? And they were like, oh, we met at a gallery opening like four years ago. And she mentioned you. And I was like, hi, nice to meet you. Random person that apparently knows me. Like, so keeping within like coolness of other people and each other and just doing good and cool stuff like for each other consistently, that's going to make all the difference in the world at the end of the day. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you had advice for someone that is like first getting into boudoir photography, like thinking about starting that as a career, what, what advice would you have for them to get started? Um, so I will assume that this person already knows their camera. Yeah. Uh, so if you're already a photographer and you're thinking, okay, I like, I like the idea of boudoir and this is where I want to go. Um, there are some resources that I've tapped into over the last several years uh, that have been like undeniably life-changing. One of them is do more photography, do more photo, do more photographers. Oh my God, I'm gonna say it wrong. So <laughs> it's a group on Facebook called do more photographer or do more photography. What is it? Oh my God. No one you'd ever type things in anymore. Oh yeah, exactly. And you just go like do That's more it's, it's do more, but like do, it used to be something else and they, they made it a little more generic, but really, it really does focus in on uh, boudoir and like everything from like posing, like from the basics. Cool. Yes. To all the way to like how to market yourself. Like, you know, once you've figured out how to do, how to do the pictures and then how do, okay, how do you sell these pictures? Mm. And then it has things like, okay, what if, I mean, like, this is, this is how crazy good it is. They have um, tutorials on there, which by the way, the membership, the yearly membership is ridiculously cheap for all the free videos you get to That's, watch after. Oh, I can't yes. remember, remember what the membership costs. I think it's like 150, 170, somewhere in there for a year, but they have videos so specific to like, what if I only have a hundred square feet uh, or let's say 500 square feet studio with a couch and that's it, like no bed. And they're like, we got that. Here you go. And there's like a whole tutorial on how to post somebody on just a couch. And it's, it's ridiculous. Like, that's I mean, fantastic. You could think of that is not covered. And they're super cool. Um, the girl that heads it up is Canadian. She's super nice. Um, I'm actually one of the moderators of the group because um, she has a couple of us Americans because we're, we're mean. <laughs> and she's super nice. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, as a Wisconsinite, I can say, uh, yeah, for sure. I had to do some major cultural adjustments. Yes, <laughs> and I try to be one of the nice ones because I'm, I'm mean everywhere else. Like, I'm mean on the AP. <laughs> Is it do more studio inspiration? Is that it? No, that's a branch of it. That's a branch of it. Okay, cool. Got it, got it. To studio, because we were having so many people ask about studio stuff, we were like, we can make this its own group. So, like, um do more photographers maybe okay i don't know why i'm not just looking this up yeah because i'm curious do more photographers yeah so i mean oh you know what i can't see me on the thing anymore i just see you so i can't even see what i'm doing but yeah it's it's do more photographers okay and is it on facebook or are they just like a, a website well it's, it's several things so the okay Facebook page is open to everybody. It's free, you know, free. Cool. Um, all you have to do is obviously um, join. And then there's like, they, we go through and vet everybody that wants to join. Sure. Uh, and then uh, there's a forum, which is, hold on one second before I say it. <laughs> no, you're forum. good. Go for it. Do more. I feel like I'm doing an advertisement for them. Um, Shoot. 
Yeah, do more photographers.com. Cool. That's the forum. Not only does it have tutorials on how to do this and this and that, it also has contracts that you can purchase, which is specific to boudoir. It's huge. It is huge. And I mean, I think it's like 14 pages long and you can like chop it down or leave it the way it is. I mean, obviously you can put your own branding on it. It's so amazing. There's, it's just, and that's not the only contract that there, that there's like model releases. There's pretty much anything you think of. Like if it's just a marathon, you need a contract for that or what, anything you can think of it. They literally have it there, which is why I pimp them so hard. And, um, uh, I would say I'm not sponsored, but I, I kind of am sponsored, but, um, <laughs> So, but anyway, uh, you know, outside of finding a really good resource like that, where you can just pretty much sit all day and, and watch videos and learn things like that, I would say, um, you know, I think like we kind of touched on it, but like one of the major things for me for a boudoir photographer to have is like bedside manner, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of ironic because beds and boudoir, but I mean, literally a bedside manner is required for that specific genre because it's not like you're shooting a headshot and you're late it's you know headshots are so you know it's cold it's it's not a necessarily you don't really connect with the person yeah when you're doing boudoir is so vulnerable it's so like they're uh, sometimes completely naked you mm -hmm. know uh they're not, not always but i mean sometimes they're completely naked and, and they're very they're just putting their stuff out there for you to help capture them in a way that, um, I mean, sometimes they're super confident. They walk in, they're like, I know I got a great body. I've been working on this thing. Like, let's shoot this, you know, blah, blah, blah. Or I just bought these. Just like, oh, okay. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's go. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, all right. You know, and it's funny. It's like, I like everybody. Like, you know, I can't say, oh, I really like the confident ones or, oh, I don't, I like the ones that are a challenge. I like everybody. Like, I think mm -hmm. it's, I think it's just fun. Yeah. And um, but yeah, as far as like being a boudoir photographer, find a good resource like that, make sure you have a good bedside manner and then make sure, you know, of course, in the business side of it, you're charging your worth and you're charging, uh, something respectable. Like don't be doing these $50. Nobody should be shooting for $50. Um, boudoir, yeah. because boudoir is a luxury item. It's not a we're not talking about a birthday. We're not talking about an anniversary. We're not talking about, uh, you know, I need a picture on this day because I haven't had a family photo. Boudoir is like a extra special yeah. luxury item that is not necessary. It's something that you save up for and you go all out. Like you, mm -hmm. get, you get your hair done, you get your makeup done, you're, you know, whatever. And like the funny thing about the ironic part about that is I'm, I'm going to touch on this because I don't want anybody to listen to this and go, oh, so you have to have your hair and makeup done. So you don't want me naturally or whatever. My company name is Naturally Boudoir for a reason. Yeah. yeah. The reason is, is because when I first started, um, I realized there was a lot of women who wanted me to Photoshop things like enhance things or shrink stomachs. Oh, or, wow. Yeah. Whatever. And I just was like, okay, my focus is going to be capturing you exactly how you are. Um, the hair and makeup for me is because when I get my hair and makeup, to, if it's salon day, like girl today was salon day, I am feeling myself today. I've yes. Already, I've already taken some selfies or whatever. It's like when I have salon day for myself, I feel already confident walking in the door. Yeah. And so like for me to provide that service, it doesn't mean that you have to have a heavy face of makeup. It does not. As a matter of fact, there's several women that come to me and say, I don't really wear makeup. Do I have to have makeup? And I go, here's the thing. You don't have to wear heavy makeup at all, but you do have to wear makeup because when I take your picture, we don't want you to look dead mm -hmm. so you have to make sure your everything matches. And that's really mostly what the makeup is doing. It's not necessarily to make you look like whatever, you know, it's really just to make sure the camera is picking up the the color that we want mm -hmm. it doesn't mean you have to have the fake eyelashes or heavy makeup or dark lips or whatever or the big hair or anything like that i just need to make sure that you feel confident in the pictures that come out you know yeah. and i want you to feel like if you want to look supernatural like you just walked out of a, a shower let's do it we can do it yeah yeah big and curly and whatever let's do that like i pick the i pick the style that matches the client, not necessarily, it's not a one size fits all kind of thing either. So anyway, 
Yeah. And I think that's something that it's like part of that understanding is also as you're starting, it's like there's a translation that happens in the camera. Like yeah. there's something that that happens as you are photographing and it's being recorded as an image. It's not going to be exactly what it is that you're witnessing as a person. So it's like it's not going to be what you're seeing right there. So knowing how to kind of like mitigate that translation a little bit, especially with uh, like hair and makeup and that kind of stuff. It's just like, this is gonna be, that's gonna make that translate translation a little bit more smooth rather than just being like, oh yeah, totally. Oh, like nothing and everything. It's like, no, the camera is not gonna translate that very well. So let's make sure we've got something for it. You don't, like it's not what you see is what you get. It's really not you know, you think taking a picture, you would look exactly the way like the human eye would see it. And it's like, nope, it doesn't happen that way. Nope. The camera catches so much detail. They have to make sure that detail is, you know, that's why we have editing software and, and all that kind of stuff to make sure that it is, you know, it's, it's close to, it's funny that we have to edit to get it to look natural. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's like when I bring things into um, like the editing workshops that I do, it's very similar where it's just like whatever your camera captured, that's probably not what you experienced in real life. That's not what it was that you saw. So how do we get it closer to what it was that you experienced, not just like on a visual level, but on like an emotional kind of connection, higher understanding zen kind of thing so it's like that's when it comes to adding in different like colorizations and modifying the light and all of that it's not possible to do that straight out of camera so that editing is that second part of it and fred was asking on our thing hey fred um how do you do you do a lot of photoshopping on your images so how much is that that post-processing compared to the actual taking pictures part so um i um uh do about 90% of what I do in Lightroom. Mm -hmm. And mostly it's, uh, I remove, so like my rule, my rule of thumb is if it's not there in six months, then I remove it like if, or maybe six weeks. So if you got like a bruise on your leg or you got a, you know, you woke up with a pimple on your face or whatever, I definitely remove all of those things. Um, but as far as like, it's, it's interesting um, I have to make sure with each client, because it's all individual basis, um, who wants what in their pictures. Like some people have scarring and you think, oh, they probably want me to remove that. And never, ever, 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 ever assume that your client wants you to remove anything from their photo. Um, I, I very, have a very delicate way of asking like, oh, I see that you have like a little blemish we didn't have that when we had our first meeting. Do you want me to make sure that I get those out of the pictures? And they, they confirm for me, yes. Or if they say, this tattoo has so-and-so's name on it. I really don't want that in my pictures. Yeah. So that really helps me to know. Like I ask them questions leading up to the session. And, and honestly, if it's like someone's name across their arm or some large area, I, I typically, especially if I know in advance, I will pose them in such a way that that's kind of hidden mostly. Um, you know, of course, every now and then I'll have a picture and I'll have to Photoshop that out. But like, honestly, I try to focus on all the good parts that they are okay with. Um, and really, um, so to answer the question about how much Photoshop do I do, uh, I remove blemishes, I remove temporary things. Um, and then I, I purchased something called portraiture, which basically gives a nice smoothing to the skin. I will say, I usually run one pass over on men because you know obviously you don't want look you don't want too smooth for a guy. You want like nice texture on their faces, but I do like one pass over on the guys, and then I did two passes on women, uh, depending on their individual skin tone and how how it looks and everything. And it's really not to again try to make them look like something that they're not, but it's just really just to give them a nice smooth. It's just because you're, you're, you're taking a portrait and also you're investing a lot of money into me to make sure that your pictures look good. I want to yep. make sure they look good, you know? Um, but that's really all I do. Like I don't, I don't enhance or reduce or anything. It's actually in my contract that if that's something that you really, really need, then it's $50 a picture. And I actually give that to somebody else. Cause I don't even, I don't even do that. Like I don't mm -hmm. even mess with it. Yeah. It's like, if you want me, if you want like liquefy tool and all of that, you got to Yep. We're going to go to somebody else for that and the expertise. Yeah. Cause I don't, I don't, 
I don't do that in any sort of way in any type of photography that I do. If I have to do, if I need that in my life, I usually hire it out to people. I have a list of people that I, I'm like, hey, I need this thing done. They're like, cool, I'll do that. Actually, one of my best good friends, uh, Nina Covington, she does a lot of my, she does a lot of stuff for me like that. Right. So, um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't do, I do just enough to kind of remove blemishes and smooth skin. That's mm -hmm. the bulk of what I do. So yeah. 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 Same. It's like, and then of course it, it, there's that, of course, when you first start editing, I feel like there's always that kind of balance where I, I wish more, more times than not, I had done the edits, gone to bed, woken up the next morning, looked at them and gone, <laughs> nope, <laughs> that really what I want. Is this really what I want to put out there for, for me? as yep. a business owner yeah. chances are i didn't do that and i really should have so <laughs> i do that more with pictures of myself than i do with anybody else i think i'm really heavy critique about like my client stuff but like when it comes to me i'm like this looks great and i upload it and the next one i go why did i put that up for oh my god what are you doing yeah why what mood was i in where i thought that was a great idea yeah like <laughs> <laughs> it's like the weirdest stuff so yeah it's like if there's one thing especially when it comes to editing sleep on it yeah. sleep on it until yeah. you have like that stylization down and you can yeah. just do it in your sleep and you've got your presets and Lightroom ready to go and you can just plug them in and you're just like boom 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 got it got it good 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 if you're yeah. still in that midst of figuring your style out sleep on it that is the one thing I wish someone would have told me show it to a friend and then <laughs> yes yes have have a good friend a friend the same friend that tells you like before you walk out the door are you really gonna wear that or like something like that get that friend yes. to look at your pictures someone who will give you an actual legitimate critique so rather than just being like don't don't show your mom don't show because your mom every time is going to be like it's beautiful good job i love it or what is that and what are you doing? It's always one or the other with mine. So yeah. <laughs> it's funny. I have different people in my life and I'm like, if I want the, the real truth, like I know that person I need to go to. And then the other one's like, if I need a pat on the back, I'm like, this is a person I'm going to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, what kind of mood am I in that day? I'm like, is it because I know it's good, but I just need a little bit of like a good job. I'll, I'll send it to my mom. Yeah. She'll be like, you did such a good job. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> exactly. Oh man. Oh, okay. Yeah. We hadn't even gotten a chance to talk about, um, uh, Savage Studios oh, and yeah. studio setup. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you got going on? Uh, where, where is it located? Where, like, what's the whole deal with, with the studio space? So basically we got the keys on February 24th. We opened, uh, I think like March 1st or whatever. And as you guys all know, Corona came to town, locked us all down. So like right before I could even really get excited and start talking about it, um, we were shut down. So we've been taking this time that we've been closed to kind of tweak the studio. It's funny because I'm sure if you've been following along with my posts, like you were like, oh, this is the studios. And then like just recently I reposted the website and it's completely different. Like we're I, re I did a, a complete overhaul on the entire space. We added a psych wall, which is huge. Yeah. Um, it was, a, everybody knows it's, it's an expense to add that to your studio, but it's such a huge like plus to have that available. And then um, there's another huge space that was basically I call it the owner space that you didn't really have access to. And now you have access to it because she took over another spot. And then um, there's another, uh, basically a two room private area that is big enough to have like a crew in there. It, I call it the, the boudoir room only because it, it feels the most boudoir-y out of the, all the spaces. Um, but it's really, I'm keeping it very minimalistic. I do have a piano back there as a prop. I have some really nice antique couches. Uh, we have some rugs. It's uh, I have like a homey side, and then I have like a very minimalistic side to the two rooms. Because me as a photographer, sometimes I like to have a homey space, and then sometimes I like to have very little, you know, just very little there. I just want like brick, or I just want like whatever. I just want just a little bit of something. 
And so like, I'm trying to, um, uh, you know, create a space that everybody can use and um right now basically i didn't even like say where i'm located sorry <laughs> but basically the uh the studio is located inside of king plow and if you know anything about the creative world in atlanta it is literally it's basically you know we i was in the goat farm before and they're kind of in the middle of a shutdown because of actually renovations not even corona mm -hmm. but they are about to close completely for renovations well the King Plow is basically very similar to the goat farm, but clean. Like, you know, because the goat farm is very dirty. Like, it has a super warehousey. There's dirt. literally like farm animals running around. <laughs> it's literally a farm. It's literally a farm. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, King Plow is like the, the, uh, you know, it has that warehouse feel but it's super clean. It's very safe. That's one of the major things I'm trying to push about the studio is there are different places around Atlanta that you can go to, but you don't feel safe leaving your car in the parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something I've heard from a lot of photographers. And I didn't really realize that because I've kind of, I guess, been spoiled because uh, the places that I've been, because even the goat farm was pretty secure uh, because we got, uh, what's his name? Um, I can't remember what his name is, but he, all the time in the goat, in the uh, golf cart, like running around, making sure oh. everybody's safe. Yep. So, but like, um, so it was safe, but like there's a lot of studios in Atlanta that has like either very minimal parking or no parking. So you're kind of on the street and then, then you're kind of like exposed to whatever is in the area. And depending on what area you're in, could be a high crime area or whatever and, and hauling your expensive gear where it's just like you've got thousands of dollars worth of equipment right as you're walking in and out yeah been there and it's uh that's like part one right is the gear that we have mm -hmm. part two is the fact that you're inviting clients and if their car gets broken into yes like, you have like a completely like, you know, it's, it's bad so like um one of the things i really love about king plow is that it's security everywhere gated you know it's gated uh parking i mean just super secure i actually live very close to the area um so it's it's really nice um i i can't wait to what i'm doing right now is basically hosting private tours so like say you're just really curious and you don't know when you'll want to you'll want to rent i'm just basically showing everybody the space because i yeah. feel like as soon as you step your foot inside the door you'll be like oh whoa i need to like come up with a project just for the space oh my goodness because that's how I felt when I saw it. And like, it is so amazing. Like, I love the space so much and I want to just share it with everybody. And uh, so basically that's, that's what I want to do is like, um, that's my heart right now is bringing everybody in. I want to host like little, like as soon as we can have people together, I want to host like little parties and just have everybody come in and bring a camera and do what you want. I have like a model or somebody there. We can shoot. Oh, that'll be awesome. That'll be yeah. awesome. I want to have like ASAP in and like, just, you know, like bring all your students in and just, that's not fun. You know, like, even if we just shoot like a watermelon, I don't care. Like, let's just <laughs> do something fun. And, uh, you know, cause it's, it's been a long time since we've seen each other and yeah. we need yeah, so. yeah, for sure. And I put like, if you guys are interested in the comments there, I put the links to uh, the Savage Studios Facebook page. So like follow along. And then um, Julie's Naturally Boudoir uh, um, webpage there as well. So and again, like same kind of thing, as soon as we've got like workshops back up and running and everything, like join on the mailing list, like on Facebook and follow along and we'll just keep you all posted as soon as we can like kind of like get things back in, in the swing of things. Um, but yeah, for now, this is what we get to do and <laughs> hang out and share knowledge and all of that awesomeness. Yeah. Yep. The only other thing I'm, I'm doing or have planned on the calendar, I had to reschedule, of course, because of Corona, but uh, is I have a model meetup that I'm doing way down in Sparta, Georgia. Oh, cool. And it's um, a model friend of mine that I kind of met through a person that actually my hairstylist actually does her hair too. And so that's, that's one way that we know each other. But she, her family purchased this mansion down in Sparta and she's renovated the whole thing. And um, she, I guess my hairstylist was like, oh, you need to, you need to meet her and you guys need to do something together. And 
so like after my last workshop after you know it's always as soon as i post the pictures from a workshop people are like when's the next one well she reached out and said hey if you want to have one down here and it's so funny because at the workshop i was doing which was up in rome georgia which is north of atlanta i said the next one i'm going to do is going to be south and make it Mm -hmm. and I didn't even know where it was going to be and she reached out to me literally the week of that I posted the pictures and she said hey I'm in Sparta and I was like I don't even know where Sparta let me just google this real quick hold on yeah <laughs> like, oh you're down in Macon oh my god this is amazing like I literally just said Macon. and so and the fact that she has a mansion so we have like indoor outdoor property that we can shoot on it's gonna be epic that's gonna be amazing is that already scheduled is that happening it's october let me just real quick before i out speak but yeah it was in may it was supposed to be this month and of course we had to reschedule and now it's moved to october 4th um, well that's gonna be gorgeous you, go to, you put the link for naturallyboudoir.com if you go yeah. to naturallyboudoir.com and you do forward slash workshops you'll see um i think on the on the front page you'll see also photographers here's your page basically it's about workshops and stuff and and so it has all the information there i have several models coming i mean it is a it's a blowout of a day like basically i'm doing from 10 to 5 and you walk away with a full portfolio like that's awesome. there will be so many there that you you literally will leave with a portfolio you cannot not leave with a portfolio so it's i'm, I'm so excited so excited <laughs> oh that's gonna be so cool okay i'm putting that on my calendar because i want to go uh <laughs> and i think it's stuff like that where it's like if you guys are interested in getting into the, like that stylization of photography take advantage of stuff like that like book it make sure and and keep the day because that's going to be the stuff that it's like you get your portfolio you get to hang out with julie you get to be able to just experience some st like with other photographers as well and walk away having like we're kind of like we were talking about before with that confidence of when you do finally start to get those gigs you're like oh yeah i did this and the light worked really well in that and so we have a similar window here and you kind of start to add those things and put them together and make those connections and then once you get out into actually running your business you're like oh okay yeah i did this already and i know what i'm doing it's always a lot more fun when you get to do something you haven't done before like but with other people it's a lot less terrifying and there's yeah. a lot less consequences so do that as much as you possibly can for sure yeah <laughs> and there i'll i'll have a, a couple of it's it's beautiful natural light all the way through but i i, I always make a um I make a point to have like an area where I bring in some uh, like strobe lighting or LED lighting so that oh, when nice. you walk away, you have the experience of being able to shoot natural light as well as using artificial light so that no matter what the circumstances, when you go to a shoot, you'll know exactly how to capture a picture, no matter what kind of light you, you have. So, yeah. 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 Oh, and I think like uh, on that, the do you mainly use natural light or do you use artificial light or combination of both? Or does it just depend on whatever it is that you're shooting? Personally, for me, I really love available light because I'm a fast shooter. Um, now I have uh, purchased like the beauty, not the beauty, but the uh, ring light. Uh, which oh, yeah. I've as, I mean, I use it all types of ways. I can put it behind my subject as a backlight. Like, for instance, my favorite time of the day, as every most every photographer is, is the uh, the golden hour, right? And if I've missed that, or I can't, or you know, the day is not as sunny, or you're not getting the golden hour uh, lighting, you can kind of fake it with a nice LED. You can put it behind them and actually make it look like golden hour. And so, like that's kind of what I do. I'm like so, um, I try to get a, some beauty shots during my session. To make sure i do have like and really if i if i'm not doing it for my client i do it for my makeup artist so that she has some pictures for her portfolio so it's really important that you get really good portraits of the face for say the people on your crew that are doing hair and makeup or whatever um so i try to work with all lighting but i would say me personally probably about 90 percent of the time i'm doing natural light because it's uh it's faster I don't yeah. have to set up anything. And honestly, if I walk in, like what I do in my workshops, the first thing I say is like, the first thing I do when I walk in a space that I'm not familiar with is I start looking for pockets of light. Like literally I'm looking for the sun to come through a window or an angle or something. If I'm inside or if I'm outside, 
and it's it's crazy bright. Now I'm looking for, okay, where is a good shaded spot, but maybe some harsh lights kind of peeking through. Mm, yeah. Being, like harsh light all around me. Like where can I find like, when I say a pocket of light, I literally mean like a stream of light coming in because you can expose way down and just get that literal spotlight. Like you can, you can walk outside and your naked eye sees bright light everywhere, right? But you and I will see like, oh, the sun is coming through this tree and it's so yes. bright in this one little spot. And we just like expose down and all you see is like this, this beautiful light right here and I'm dark everywhere else. And I'm like, how'd you do that? Hey, it's magic. You know, yeah. you just you know. <laughs> that's what you get. And so like that's kind of that's my goal is to to, you know, I, I like those um people call it dark and moody, but honestly it's like pockets of I I don't know what to call it. It's it's pockets of light for me. Because sometimes well, it's like uh Drew and I when we would do um the photo shoots at the uh Southeastern Railway Museum, we'd bring our models uh dressed up in uh like vintage clothing and and all of that and go around and there was one time we were we were there and we were walking through and there's this epic spot where for whatever reason at that exact time of day at that exact like time of year that we were there the sunbeam came down bounced off of one of the train cars one of the metal train cars and then bounced back it was like god light it was just this like beam of god light and i immediately like run back to drew and i was just like drew bring the models we got to go we got some god light over here we got to do it and he was like knew exactly what i was talking about and he's like let's go people let's go it's not gonna last for another light's gonna be gone in like 15 minutes yeah. and we just like booked it and we were like model there model there model there and then it's like go oh, shoot 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 make it happen and yeah in 15 minutes it was gone but it was something that like over a period of time when you shoot in different scenarios like that you're able to immediately look at it and go Yep. that's it that's the yep. one let's go make it make it happen because it's only going to be there for a short amount of time right because the sun moves obviously and so you're like crap this is so pretty let's go here and i think that's why in the beginning i would find those pockets of light and just shoot and shoot and shoot because i knew as soon as the sun moved a little bit like okay now it's across the room or now it's mm -hmm. over here which is fine but now it's a whole different backdrop or it's a whole different pose or it's a it's something completely different it's like oh man this light's so good for instance i think one of the most amazing shots i've ever taken in my career was uh i was renting um a studio space in kind of the uh right actually the old old uh stadium the old old brave stadium not oh the, yeah but the one even before that um, right down the street from there, I had a studio that was basically an old, um, this guy bought the property and he was an inventor and he invented this, uh, anyway, let's, let's a rabbit trail. Anyway, so <laughs> this inventor had, <laughs> had bought the property. He was renting out the space to a bunch of creatives like us. And so it was a loading dock. So most of it was a loading dock and then it had some office spaces and then it had like a, a, a basement in there. And so the sun would come in because it would kind of picture an abandoned kind of looking location because yep. holes everywhere and you know it wasn't like super secure but it was really great for photography and so there was this uh, concrete staircase where a hole was in the ceiling and the light would shine in through this hole right and this girl came who i didn't know at all it was one of those uh model mayhem things as a matter of fact she reposts the picture almost every year because she says this is the best That's picture great. of me ever but um, I had her uh, like lay on the staircase and she had these ice blue eyes, right? Oh, yes. And so um, I had her lay on the stairs and I was kind of over top of her shooting down and this beam of light was just hitting her right in the eyeballs. And I swear, if you look at the picture, you would, everybody would swear that I Photoshopped it. And I was like, this is literally straight from the camera, like her eyes, like blew up. As a matter of fact, it was so bright. I had to go one, two, three and make her open her eyes because it was so bright, you know, but like I, I, it was the first time I started learning how to like expose down and make sure it wasn't like hot on her face. And, but her blue eyes was just like popping. And that's just like you said, that God light was just like right on her face, just so perfectly. And I was like, oh my God, this is, I was like, I'm done. <laughs> I was like, let's just leave. Yeah. Like this is, I can't, I love it. It's like, I'm not going to do anything better today. We did it. Good job, everyone. Goodbye. Like, yeah. <laughs> Fun. But, um, 
yeah, it's just, there's just, like you said, there's just like times in your life where you just find that perfect light and you just can't not, you know, take advantage of that. So yeah, yeah, it, it's why multiple photographers scare their uh, driving partners when we veer off to the side of the road and stop really quickly <laughs> and go, go, we got to take a picture. It's like, we're on the middle of the road. And it's like, I know, but look at that light. And it's like, we're crazy people. So it's worth yeah, it. Like, Just be very careful. <laughs> like, you know, she does this all the time. Like, you know, let's yeah. <laughs> all the road like <laughs> all right put up the flares we'll figure it out we'll get another 15 minutes yeah <laughs> well cool anything else that you wanted to throw in in our last like couple minutes that we've got we talked about pretty much everything yeah and as far as like what's going on with me and whatever uh yeah, I'm, you know, excited. Uh, you know, I'm still doing photography. Um, I just, of course, I'm like super focused on the, um, the studio and all that kind of stuff. But I still like, it's funny, I got, as soon as I said I'm retiring, like that's when everybody came out of the woodwork and was like, I need to hire you for this. And I was like, oh, okay. And so um, I actually did a calendar right before Corona came and shut everything down for this guy who did like, a, he was doing a charity, like 18 month calendar I have never done a calendar in my life and we had so much fun we had like everything mapped out it was so good like storyboarded out to know exactly what to do because when you're doing 18 you know 18 months that's a lot of like you know different scenes that you have to wind up yeah. put together and so anyway um we did that like right before the shutdown um so he was like one of two clients I had before we had to close everything and so the other one was a, a good friend of mine that I've shot her uh, I've shot her, I think, as a, a model, and then as pregnant, and then I've done her baby like every six months or so, and so uh, we did that, and so she had her first birthday, and so of course I did, I did that. But um, anyway, uh, yeah, I'm still doing photography. You know, want to bring everybody in. I can't wait to have ASAP in. You guys, yeah, uh, come and see us, and uh, bring your students and. Um, we're, we're doing like, uh, oh, I should say this. I'm sorry. I should mention this, but we're doing actually like, we're trying to help everybody get back on their feet and get the, get the ball rolling with business and stuff. And we know how like expenses and all that kind of stuff. So basically whatever you purchase, like however many hours you purchase for the studio, we're doing like a buy one, get one. So like, we're basically oh, that's great. Doubling. Yeah. So if you buy a two hour block, we're going to give you four hours. And so like, you can even use the other two hours a different day too. You don't even have to use it the same day. So like, we're just trying to help. And, you know, it's like, what can we do? You know, like, what, you know, as a studio, what can you do really? And so like, that's the only thing I could think of to do was like, Hey, you know, I know how rough it is. I've been there, you know, trying to build a business or kind of come back from a shutdown. I mean, none of us have really went through this. So um, I'm just trying to help in any way that we can. And, you know, anything that you guys can think of that we need for the studio, please let me know. I am open. And it's kind of whatever I want in the studio. I just tell the owner, I'm like, I think we need this. She goes, okay. <laughs> so yes. whatever we like in the studio, like that's what we're doing. But um, I'm excited. I appreciate you bringing me on. It's been fun. Yeah. Oh, this has been awesome. This is legit. Like these are my favorite like times of the week and everything where it's like, I just get to like hang out and talk to cool people. Yeah. My job's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate everyone coming out. And thank you, Julie. Uh, you guys have got the links there in the comments. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Stay posted. And we hope to see you all soon. We got a ton of workshops coming up also, by the way. We've got a bunch of stuff. We've got classes. We've got a billion and a half things happening almost every single day of the week. So come hang out. Um, follow Savage Studios and Ashley Boudoir, and we will see you guys next time. Bye. Have a good one. Bye, Julie.